the enchantment of good and evil. Not long ago, in a place not too far away from here, people just like you came to celebrate a very special night. A night when the souls of all the living and the dead were allowed to roam free across the earth. On this particular day, under the camouflage of witches' hats and pumpkin faces, an army of evil arrived on our doorstep. One so big and so dark that its shadow threatened to block out the light of the sun forever. A little green snot in a big sea of blue is all it is. We'll turn that place to dust in no time, said the storm. We'll take you there, said the wind. And we'll spit down from heaven, said the rain. And so a black mist descended over Kenmare, like a lullaby of fairy tales. Demon dust clogged up the eyes of those down below, and people who were awake began to dream, and people who were dreaming woke up. A ghost with no name silently kept watch over the land. His thoughts were the law, and his shadow loomed large over the town. The four guardians of the four corners were the headless horsemen. They had no past and no future. Their eyes were made of death. They did whatever the ghost with no name commanded them to do. His foot soldiers were goblins and gargoyles, witches and werewolves, bats and banshees, and belligerent boogeymen. They had faces so ugly that even their own mothers didn't love them. A dark fog enveloped the town and made the light of the sun dull. But in the eyes of the people, the world was a sparkling kaleidoscope of glittering gold. That is, until one day, when a battle took place, which changed the nature of the world forever. Tom was an ordinary boy, in an ordinary town, in an extraordinary world. He thought anything could happen to anyone at any time, anywhere. His idea of fun was to dance until you got dizzy and giggle until you started to cry. He loved Halloween more than anyone in Ireland. He even loved it more than Christmas. When he grew up, he wanted to be a magician. But until then, all he could do was dream. The ghost with no name was a force so evil that it had no face and no heart. It never slept and travelled without moving. It was bigger than a mountain, yet could fit inside a jam jar. His goal was to make everyone unhappy. He loved tears and hated smiles. Laughter gave him a migraine as big as an iceberg. The ghost with no name wasn't scared of anything. Anything except the power of children. Grown-ups are easy to control. All I have to do is promise their money and they'll do anything I want. Children are different. All they want is to have fun. So I must destroy the adult world while the children are too young to stop me. And his plan was working beautifully. Ha ha ha! Everyone is too scared to question my authority. Soon the whole earth will be a shadow of a nightmare. <laughs> Tom was the first one to notice that the grown-ups were acting strangely. His mother looked sad all the time. And all people ever talked about was money. And when something bad happened, they just blamed the politicians. And still the world grew darker. The nights got longer and the days got colder. The sun got weaker and the moon got bigger. Down below, people stopped falling in love. Babies were made in factories. Flowers stopped growing. The rat population exploded, and the smell of rotten meat filled the air. Yet nobody batted an eyelid. The ghost with no name had a legion of evildoers, 
helping him complete his wicked scheme. On his payroll were vampires, dragons, scallywags, she-devils and 10,000 types of demons. They lived on a diet of worms and dead fish and all they could drink was cold blood. And if anyone did a good deed, they were cast into the lake of fire, for fire was the only thing that could kill an evil spirit. To explain the way Tom saw the world, he had to write it down. He wrote an open letter to the children of Kenmare. Our home has become possessed by a nasty virus. We have become sick and we don't even know it. People who used to be happy are now sad. People who used to kiss are now counting their money. The rain has turned brown. Birds are singing out of tune. Cows have run out of milk. The puddles in the streets won't dry up. Rainbows have all disappeared. The stars have stopped shining. We must find out why the clocks tell the wrong time. We must make it into the future on time. We must begin last year. Last Halloween, a door was opened and through the door came an army of the undead. Because of them, plants are scared to grow. Leaves are scared to fall. Babies are afraid to cry. Soon the army will be in complete control. We must join together, not as an army, but as an orchestra. Tom's message was read far and wide by those with eyes to read it. The children agreed instantly with what he said, for his words were already written in their hearts. Halloween was now only one day away. The ghost with no name was worried. Those kids will ruin me if I let them. I've got to do something. And so he called upon the wind and the rain and the ice to strike down upon the town like lightning. And so it started. First the wind. It began as a whimper and swiftly became a whirlwind. Nobody left their homes unless they had a death wish. Next it was the rain. Neptune's oceans emptied on the heads of all the people. The tears of a thousand slaves dropped down on top of the town. It began with buckets and ended with waterfalls. It was like someone had left a tap running since the beginning of time. Kenmare was like an overflowing bathtub. The ghost with no name laughed as he watched the townspeople struggle to survive. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Look at them drowning like rats. I'm a genius. They'll never stop me now. But then the ghost with no name did a very stupid thing. Just as the water was starting to fall away, he called in the Ice King. But instead of turning the earth into a living hell, he turned it into a heaven on earth. The people of the town rejoiced. They were cold. But they were happy. They saw their town turn into a playground of fun and fantastic photographs. Snowmen became the uncrowned kings of Kenmare, and snowball fights were mandatory, and no one got hurt. Such was the softness of the snow. The headquarters of evil was in Rina Gross. It was a mecca of malevolence. But the evil spirits were so dark that they could only be seen under the light. But Tom had a plan. He wanted to lure the evil spirits into the square. Then the grown-ups would see the faces of evil that were spinning webs of doom around the town. Fools! Fools! I'm surrounded by fools! If those accursed children ruin my master plan... I will boil their bones in a bucket of black blood. But then the ghost with no name made his biggest mistake. He told the sun to shine. And shine she did. The people of the town were never so happy. The town came alive with life and laughter. The world became a ballroom. Young and old 
moved in unison to the rhythm of the band. The ghost with no name was furious. His plan had backfired. I'm going to frighten that flock of fools so bad they'll never foolishly fumble for freedom again. And so a scream, so scary and so terrifying, was let loose across the airwaves that it traumatised the tender hearts of the townspeople. Atheists started praying. Children started crying. Doctors started dying. The dead got deader. The scream went on and on and on and on and on. On every radio station, on every frequency, in every eardrum, it was like the cry of a billion banshees, shrieking in a symphony of psychotic sadness. Tom knew that the only thing he could do to soothe the souls of the sufferers was to write a song that could set their souls free. When the people heard his melody, they would remember love, they would remember jokes, and most of all, they would remember to forgive. And so a concert was arranged for the night of Halloween. The attendance of ghosts and ghouls was completely forbidden by the ghost with no name. If any goblin or vampire even thought about leaving headquarters, he would be sentenced to sleep with 6,000 snakes. My plan is nearly complete. There are more demons than humans. Once midnight comes, the world will have to kneel down before me and beg for survival. Ha 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 ha! The first and last piece of music was three hours long. It was called The Symphony of Good. It started like a lazy river. It moved like a snail over the motorway. It sounded like a baby rainbow singing to its mother. Then it began to soar like a bird with new wings. It took off up into the air and over the audience's heads. It was a symphony made of angels' dreams. It was so beautiful that the army of evil heard it instantly. The chaos of evil is ever so demanding. Being bad is a full-time pain. There is no rest for wicked souls. One by one, the undead were lured by its luxuriously lofty melodies. The sky above the square was filled with spirits of every kind. As the song traveled through the heavens, the people's minds were lifted to a place where reality was fake and only the imagination was real. All present were mesmerized by the spell cast by the orchestra. Even the ghost with no name became entranced. But as the beauty drew to a climax, his anger grew. His thoughts hemorrhaged into a brain tumor. His veins started throbbing. Just when the music reached a peak, it ascended again and again. Now every instrument was playing as loudly and as beautifully as it possibly could. It sounded like a supernova full of sunshine. Every spirit, dead and undead, stood like a statue as the final note was played. The ghost with no name was like a volcano at boiling point. Just then came the moment of truth. All of a sudden, a procession of people with sticks of fire. Their hearts had been ignited by the beauty of the song. It was then the fire eaters and the fire jugglers illuminated the square. As the music stopped, a fireworks show lit up the night sky, and under its spark, the shape of every dragon, demon, vampire, werewolf, goblin, and witch became visible to the naked eye. Their embarrassment, under the microscope lens of watchful men, women and children, 
made them all freeze in a moment of never-ending calamity. They shrieked and screamed and gasped and yelped beneath the flames. They cried and pleaded and begged and bartered in their final moments. They prayed for mercy and got none. As the fireworks roared, the full extent of evil became apparent. People could see the army before them. It read like a who's who of the criminal underworld. As the army of evil was vanquished, one by one, the orchestra played one final phrase. It was so powerful and so beautiful that the ghost with no name knew he was doomed from the very first note. The headless horsemen slumped down on their horses, paralyzed by the waves of sublime sound. At once the smog that enveloped the town evaporated. The skies cleared and the clouds disintegrated. Tom was a hero. The other children called his name as they carried him around the square. And life began again. But just so nobody would forget how close they came to losing their home every year, the people of the town gathered in the square to read aloud the story of their battle with the forces of evil. That way the grown-ups and the children would never forget the story of the enchantment of good and evil.